Hey, what's up, nerds? It is Paul again at Radio Free Hammer Hall. Today, I'm going to do the uh, the thing that I promised. We've got a little rundown here on demon princes. And are these things the absolute piles of trash that so many people seem to say they are, uh, including, I think, myself. I have probably said that a number of times. Um, and uh, I think that... Uh, Early conclusion is yes and no. Um, it kind of depends on what you want to do with them um, and, and what you do with them exactly and what your expectations are. So let's get into this thing. So here's the war scroll. Um, there's a bunch of different stuff going on here and a bunch of different options uh, available to you with this. First of all, we just have base 8-inch move, 3-up save, 10 bravery, 10 wounds. Uh, at the time of recording, he is currently 170 points, which is really not a lot um, for what you might think of a Demon Prince to be. Um, he's kind of like normal foot hero price, basically, so um it's it's just not as uh exciting as you might think and it, it, i think that kind of goes down the road of where we're at with this war scroll in general and what you can do with it um so uh we have three different weapon options the demonic axe hellforge sword or malefic talons uh the axe uh is my personal choice uh five attacks threes threes rend two two damage hellforge sword five attacks threes fours minus one d3 damage and sixes to hit do d3 mortal wounds and the attack sequence ends and then the talons are eight attacks threes threes no rend two damage um very important to note here it, this is a thing that i have seen a lot of people stumble on you get to pick one of these three profiles. Um, a lot of people seem to be like initially keying in on this that like, oh, I pick an ax or a sword and then I also get the talons. Um, not the case at all. One of the three. Um, so just a quick note, his, his damage output without doing anything else just on its face not very good the the like the base standard attack profile for like a five wound hero these days is basically five attacks threes threes rend one two damage so on his best of these three attacks he's only improving on that by one rend so it, it, he's not like a powerhouse in melee on his war scroll all right let's look at the other things that we have going on here um you can choose to either give him wings or a trophy rack if you give him wings he will fly and he will have a move of 12 inches instead of eight uh, if you go with the trophy rack then uh units wholly within nine inches of him do not take battle shock tests and every time he kills a unit that grows by three inches um so he can be an interesting utility piece uh by doing that uh there's not a lot of like what i would think of as like the popular choices for this army that are really going to be that concerned about battle shock um but i think there is actually a place and role for that which we're going to get to excuse me uh as we get on through this he's also got the uh aura of chaos and that is a six up ward then he has these uh five different heroic actions available to him uh this depends on which mark of chaos you give to him now remember this is a heroic action so you have to use your hero heroic action in the hero phase to activate these special abilities these are not things that he just has all the time so 
Uh, undivided, uh, he gets strikes first. Uh, if he is corn, uh, whenever um, uh, whenever a model is slain uh, by this model, you heal one wound. Uh, Zinch, uh, wordy and complicated, but the the basic idea is if he if you're doing this on your own turn he can cast a spell as if he were a wizard and he can pick any spell from uh the lore of the damned which is a spell lore for slaves of darkness if it is on your opponent's turn then you ignore the uh, he has a, a two-up spell ignore so um it, it, it's interesting um, like this, the Zinch is definitely very in flavor for Zinch. Like you just basically can become a wizard, but it costs you a heroic action to do it. Uh, Nurgle, uh, enemy ward saves uh, cannot be made while uh, he's within three inches of the unit. Um, and then Slanesh, uh, if he makes a charge move, then he gets uh, an extra attack with his melee weapons. So. All of these are, I, I would say, like mostly like situationally useful. Um, undivided is tough because he doesn't really benefit from undivided in any way, uh, other than, of course, just uh, getting to use this particular heroic action. Um, corn gives you some healing. Um, the Zinch, I think, is actually solid because, like, when you need a particular spell out of the spell lore, you can just reach in and grab it. Um, so it's, you know, it, it's definitely really good. Um, the Nurgle one is incredibly powerful, but incredibly situational. Uh, and then Slanesh, I mean, it just makes him, like, extra killy, um, which is never a bad thing. Um, he his scroll needs it, so I am not going to be mad about that. All right, so um, before we get too much into uh, all of the different uh, things that can impact your demon princes, I just kind of want to preface this discussion now that we're just kind of like through the war scroll, right? Um, I think a big chunk of people's hang up on demon princes is like their head cannon, or even not even necessarily head cannon, but like actual lore of what demon princes are supposed to be. Um, right, they're supposed to be like these like chosen heroes of chaos, like the finest mortal warriors that have been blessed by the gods and ascend to demonhood. Um, and like. I feel like his war scroll just doesn't really reflect that very well. Um, but if you just banish that from your head and look at like what it does and how you can use it, suddenly these things start to make a little more sense. We can figure out what to do with them. So I think the we need to take a fresh look at this stuff, fresh eyes, look at um, where he is points wise and what you get for that um you know he he's priced like basically like a decent foot hero not like he's not priced like a monster he's not a monster um so it, he's just it, he's just a, a, a souped up dude um anyway let's get into what we can do within slaves to darkness i'm not gonna even think about what we would do with this in other armies the answer is basically nothing since pretty much everything that makes this guy actually worth putting on the table is located in like the allegiance abilities for slaves to darkness not the like on his war scroll um so we have three different damned legions that like specifically have like a, an interaction that i would say matters to uh your demon princes number one cabalists um, all of your heroes and Kabbalists become a wizard, which means your demon prince becomes a wizard, which opens up a lot of interesting possibilities. Um, 
you know, for quite some time, Arcane Tome was like everybody's favorite spell, or uh, not spell, everybody's favorite artifact. Um, and all it did really was make you a wizard. And so, like, it, it, we have a good spell lore for him to dip into. So it's definitely um, a good possibility. I like Kabbalists in general. Uh, um, the spoilers. Um, all of your monsters and demon princes uh, get, or actually no, it's just all of your monsters get two extra wounds, and your demon princes all get to have a command trait, even if they're not your general. Um, now, I would just like to address a complaint that I've heard some people make. Like, it feels like this is the, supposed to be the one where, like... You know, your demon prince is the general, right? And if you make your demon prince the general, you lose out on this. Well, like, then, then just don't do that. <laughs> you know, like, 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 don't worry so much about the lore and, and just play what you got to maximize what you can. Um, the spoilers is like, it, like, there's a whole bunch of good command traits available to demon princes. So this actually kind of is like a, a pretty good option uh, if you're going for like a demon prince oriented build all right and then the last one is legion of the first prince so for this you would have to mark your uh demon prince undivided but the legion has the ability to like just give out any god mark to your undivided units um, well, just one of them each turn. So uh, it lets you kind of have that utility of like what you need out of all of those different heroic actions that he has available to him, as well as uh, just the benefits from the different god marks uh, that we're going to talk about in a second. Actually, I think we're talking about that right now. Hold on. Yeah, that's my next slide. All right. So real quick, what we have going on for just the base of what you get with the different marks. Corn, he gets plus one attack when he charges. Nurgle, uh, your enemy attacks coming in are minus one to wound. Slanesh adds one to run and charge rolls, and he'll have a command ability that he can use on himself to run and charge. Zeech gets a six up spell ignore, and he knows the warp reality spell, uh, which lets you teleport other Zeech units to your wizard. Uh, undivided is all stuff that doesn't actually have any effect on a demon prince. So, um, that, that kind of makes the, uh, Legion of the First Prince option a little awkward, because you're going in, like, base, I'm gonna do nothing with this guy, but I'm gonna then dedicate my allegiance my, like my sub-faction allegiance ability all into manipulating his god mark to get what I want out of it. Um, so, I mean, it, you can, it becomes like this weird, like, Swiss army knife thing. Um, but, I, I mean, like, if you want to go that route, it, cool, do it. Um, but uh, it would not be my choice, I don't think. All right. So, now we're getting into kidding out your demon prince like what you're actually going to do with this thing so he can take any of the command traits in slaves to darkness uh bolstered by chaos gives him two extra wounds and he becomes a monster so then if he's running into spoilers he's a monster so he gets two more wounds from that so um it would bring him to a total of 14 wounds and he becomes a monster and he gets a, like this command trait for free in that sub faction, which is pretty good. Um, it, it gives you some, uh, some real beef on him. Uh, there's not a lot of like foot hero priced things that are running around at 14 wounds with a three up save and a six up ward and are a monster. So it, it's, um, it, it's interesting. It's certainly interesting. Um, in terms of like your 
your point value for like wounds and durability and stuff, I think you actually end up getting an awful lot for that. Uh, up next, uh, Diabolic Majesty. Um, he has to be uh, marked undivided for this one. Um, but he can use any of the heroic actions on his war scroll once per game. Uh, not to be denied, uh, it basically lets you do two heroic actions per turn as long as one of them is being done with your demon prince. Oh, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, Radiance of Dark Glory at the start of the hero phase. You roll a die for each friendly model within nine inches and on a or each friendly model with wounds allocated to it in nine inches. And every three plus heals a wound to that model. And for monsters, it heals three wounds. So it can definitely be useful uh, if you're doing like a whole bunch of like multi wound models in your army um the interesting thing here is that he also will uh be able to heal himself um and then if we're in a despoilers list and you're running two demon princes you'll be able to get two command traits you can make one bolstered by chaos and have all of those extra wounds and become a monster and the other one have radiance of dark glory and stand next to him and have him heal potentially three wounds every turn which is pretty good um, makes him like hella tanky. Um, all right, moving right along. Arch Sorcerer. This one can only go on a wizard, but he can become a wizard if he is in Cabalists. Um, and that lets him know all of the spells in the Lore of the Damned. Uh, and then Idolater Lord. Uh, he becomes a priest, and uh, all of your undivided cultists uh gain a the god mark that you have chosen for him up oh, and i skipped over death dealer uh your six is to wound do mortal wounds equal to your damage characteristic so definitely an interesting one there all right uh so what do we do with all of these command traits uh as I, i've already pointed out despoilers means you just always will be able to get one um, I think most of these have an interesting place and create some interesting thing to do. Bolstered by Chaos is going to make him really tanky. Um, Radiance of Dark Glory is going to be great if you are if you have like multiple, multiple monsters um, or you are um, looking to make like a multiple Demon Prince list and be really tanky. Um, Death Dealer definitely can make him more punchy. Um, Diabolic Majesty and Not to Be Denied definitely give you some extra utility with him. Uh, but Diabolic Majesty, it requires you to be undivided. So, I mean, I guess that would be a good choice if you're going into the Legion of the First Prince undivided build to begin with. Um, or Sorcerer. Uh, is great if you are going to be in Cabalists. Um, and then Idolater Lord, I, I think there's definitely uh, always, it, I mean, Idolater Lord is always a possibility. Like if you're really running a heavy cultist oriented list, um, I know there's plenty of people that really like those. So um, that is certainly a thing out there. Although, like if you're running. If you're running that sort of list, I'm not sure that like you you want a demon prince to be your general. Um, so I don't know. It would also probably be in Ravagers, so you wouldn't be getting any benefit from your sub faction on your demon prince in that case. Anywho, let's move on to artifacts. Um, there's actually a couple in here that I didn't bother putting on because they just don't really do anything for a demon prince or much of anybody else really but um so the doombringer br blade all friendly units are plus one to wound versus one of uh, uh your enemy's units you pick at the start of the game helm of many eyes he gets always strikes first uh realm warpers twist rune once per game pick a terrain feature roll a die uh 
all models or roll dice for each model within an inch on a five up they suffer a mortal wound and then the terrain blocks visibility for a turn uh the hellfire sword six to wound does mortal wounds and why did i i must have messed up i messed up something death dealer and uh hellfire sword Oh, that's what, right. Death Dealer is not sixes to wound mortal wounds. That is uh, pile in and attack twice. So I totally screwed that up. I apologize. Ignore the slide. Um, Hellfire Sword is the sixes to wound mortal wounds. Uh, Helm of the Oppressor, no rally or inspiring presence within six inches of him for enemy units. Conqueror's Crown, enemy units uh, or enemy models with one or two wounds that are within six inches of him cannot contest objectives which can be absolutely debilitating to certain armies and then other armies it does absolutely nothing to. Uh, Chaos Familiar uh, has to go on a wizard and once per game they can cast an extra spell and for that spell cast they can be anything out of the lore of the damned. Uh, and then we also have a universal artifact that uh, I almost feel like we need to do like a, a math hammer video just on this at some point. Um, but the Vial of Manticore Venom plus one to wound which uh, is better than you might think. So it's it's definitely pretty good. Um, so there's a bunch of interesting options here, right? Like the Doombringer Blade, the Hellfire Sword, and the Vial of Manticore Venom, those are all oriented towards making him uh, more killy. I have done the math on this, by the way, and the Vial of Manticore Venom is actually the thing that you're going to get the most benefit out of um, on this particular hero. Um, Chaos Familiar, I just really like. So if you're going into Cabalists, um, you know, just getting an artifact that just gives you like one bonus cast once per game is pretty nice. Um, Conqueror's Crown, I think, is really, really powerful if you're going to use him uh, to really kind of get in the mix with the enemy. Uh, Realm Warper's Twist Rune, I don't know. Helm of Many Eyes, I feel like he, it, like he's usually not going to be punching enough to really uh, be getting like a really good benefit out of that. So, all right. What else we have here? Um, I just also want to point out um, if we are in Cabalists, he becomes a wizard. And when you do that, Cabalists doesn't require you to take a Lord of the Damned spell. It just makes them all wizards. So what you can do is give him Flaming Weapon, which really like bumps up his damage output. It's like a 50% increase in damage output just from getting off this stupid spell that casts on four. Uh, so it's a, a low bar. And I, you know, if you're already in Cabalists, your opponent's going to be having a hard time to figure out um, which spells they want to try and unbind. And it's probably not going to be Flaming Weapon on a Demon Prince. Um, so that's really a thing that you know, we can do to make him uh, more punchy. So just a couple of thoughts here on, you know, just a couple of sample builds uh, for what we can do with a Demon Prince. Uh, we can make one that is super tanky, give him Mark of Nurgle, run to spoilers, run bolstered by chaos, so he becomes a 14 wound monster that uh, your opponent is minus one to hit. Uh, and then I would also, in this particular one, also give him Conqueror's Crown. So he could just go sit on objectives and say no to your opponent. Um, and he's a monster, so he's counting as five on an objective. So he's really, uh, I think, kind of, he, he makes it very difficult for your opponent to pull that away from you. Um, and he's not going to be doing a lot of damage, but he's going to survive a lot. Um, and you can just kind of sit there for a while. Uh, 14 wounds with a three up, six up, and uh, you know, it, it, you're always minus one to be wounded. Is it's pretty durable, it's definitely gonna uh, take a lot. And for 
again, for like the kind of class that he is in with his points cost, he's just not that, uh, like, it's just not that expensive to throw in a list, frankly. Um, all right. And then, you know, I would be remiss if I didn't try and make this guy hit as hard as possible. So, oddly enough, the thing that we would go with uh, to make him hit hard is Cabalists, so that we can give him Flaming Weapon to uh, improve uh, his damage. Um, we'd either give him Mark of Corn or Mark of Slanesh. Um, Mark of Corn, when he charges, he gets that extra um, damage on the charge. If he's Slanesh, then he has that heroic action that gives him the extra attack on the charge so either one you get that possibility of extra attacks when you're charging if you do it with slanesh you also get um, movement bonuses and you um yeah you get the movement bonuses and you have to do a heroic action to get the benefit corn you just get the benefit static but then the other stuff that you get with him being corn isn't as exciting. So that one is kind of up to you which way you want to go. Uh, damage wise, it's going to get you to the same place. Um, uh, then bolstered by chaos would be the command trait that I would pick for this because that will give him two extra wounds to survive a little bit longer. But more importantly, it makes him a monster. So then he gets hero uh, monsters actions and he can stomp somebody. Um, and then Vial of Manticore Venom is going to be the thing that gives us the uh, the maximum boost to our damage output. So with this particular build, if you get off Flaming Weapon and you charge, um, you're probably, like your most likely outcome with him is going to be to have... Um, uh, about 12 damage that he's going to do. Um, so, because he'll be doing six attacks, um, you can easily just all out attack him. So he'll be on twos, twos, rend two, three damage. Probably going to get in half of those attacks at least. And so, or uh, more than half of those attacks. So, if it's four attacks that gets through out of seven on twos and twos, uh, rend two, three damage, uh, he'll do a total of 12. Um, the alternate here is if instead of bolstered by chaos, if we go with, um, uh, names escaping me at the moment, but the one that lets him fight twice once per game, that can make him do just uh, have a really explosive turn uh, and just really can blow some things up. Um, so like it, it's now his damage is going to go down quite a bit with this build when he's not charging and he's not like if he doesn't get flaming weapon off and all of those things um so it, it requires a little bit of get it right but the amount of damage that he can do with you know building in all of these different things to him like like he does a shitload of damage for being a 170 point hero um plus he's moving 12 inches and flies and 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 so um like if you give him mark of slanesh he can he gets plus one to run in charge and he can run in charge so um you know your average run is going to be like four inches with that so he's going to move 16 and then charge on plus one um so it, it's really good really really good um he can alpha strike he can get across the board you can give him the ability to apply, pile in twice or you can just give him the um uh, make him a monster all the time so it's i think he has potential but you have to really dedicate and build into it um it's cool i like it I think it's interesting. Um, you know, if you go with a different mark and just go with all of the same kit other than that, like if you just want to be Nurgle or you want to be Zeech, 
um, it can give you some different options. Um, if you make him Zinch, by the way, and do all of this, like now he's effectively like a two cast wizard because you can use his, the the Zinch uh, heroic action to uh, get more spells, and he can access the whole spell lore with that. In addition to whatever spell that you give him, uh, which in this instance is going to be flaming weapon, so like you'll have that second spell cast all the time. In addition to flaming weapon, he can actually still be a useful wizard. Um. So, uh, like I think demon princes might be kind of a sleeper. Um, they're not bad. I think to make the most of them, you really kind of have to build into them. Uh, if you just like slap one casually in your, uh, I don't know, Knights of the Empty Throne list and don't give him uh, any enhancements, then he's not going to be great. If you stack him with all of the enhancements in the world and put him in the uh, right sub faction, then he's going to definitely be solid. Um, and I think that's the. Uh, I mean, that's consistent for, like, a lot of things, a lot of heroes in this game, right? Like, like if you kit them out the right way, they can be great. If you don't kit them out the right way, well, then they're just whatever their war scroll is, and a lot of times heroes on their war scroll are not that exciting. Um, so I think, um, yeah, I mean, I think that the, the lackluster damage output on his war scroll, I think, is throwing a lot of people. Um, and because you have that kind of like head cannon of how he is supposed to be, like what you want him to do, like you want him to kick people's teeth down their throats, and he he's war scroll on his own just doesn't really do that. But as you can see, like you can build into that, and there's all kinds of other stuff that you can do with this. Like I just gave you the two basic examples um, of like two like kind of extreme directions that you can take him. Um, but the thing to remember with this is that, like, this is a great utility piece with a lot of different options. He can tap into all of your artifacts and all of your command traits. Uh, he can get access to the whole spell lore very easily. Um, so there's a lot of options with the Demon Prince. Um, now, is it personally something that I'm going to do a lot? Probably not um just because it, it's just not my style as much um mostly because like to optimize it i would have to run him not girdle marked which i don't you know a grandfather would not be pleased if we did that um but anyway uh i think that's going to be about it for now guys hopefully this gives people some insight into what we can actually do with demon princes um they don't suck as bad as people seem to be saying they do um i think you know, just a quick note, like when you roll uh, the 11 or 12 on the Eye of the Gods table, um, a lot of times this is actually going to be a downgrade. I mean, it just simply put, like you have like a, a Chaos Lord on Manticore has Eye of the Gods. It's like a 270 point model. Demon Princes are 170 points. Are you going to, you know downgrade your guy by a hundred point war scroll like just because um i i don't think so but you know if it's on i don't know an exalted hero of chaos like it probably will work out quite nicely for you um so yeah that's it guys uh that's gonna be it for now i will talk to you all later happy demon princing see ya